Hello my angels, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to a brand new vlog. Now this one is going to be slightly different but as I always say, I just want to share every single aspect of my life. You see everything from the highs, the lows, from lifestyle, beauty, fashion, events, entertaining, hosting my family and just every aspect of my life. So I thought today is just such an important day for me and my family family that I really really wanted to share it with you and and hopefully you will enjoy it. So today is finally the day of the Gosh Clay charity shoot. It has been months and months in the planning. I can't tell you how many calls, how many emails and I'm just so excited that today is here and the sun is shining. It's all coming together and it's looking amazing. My father and I are patrons of the charity and and it's just incredible to, to be part of such an amazing, amazing cause. Obviously all the money being raised today is going to very, very sick children and the Great Ormond Street Hospital charity is just, it's phenomenal what they do. So to give you guys a little bit of information about the day, we are at EJ Churchill, which is a shooting school here on the West Wickham estate. And there are teams today. So the teams are a group of four. There are gentlemen and ladies shooting clays today. And the teams have to buy in. And then there is a seated lunch. We have a silent auction and a live auction. And as you know, I work with the most incredible brands. And when I say incredible, not only are the products amazing, the brand ethos, the heritage, everything like that, they also give to charity. And so when we were thinking about the auction prizes, I spoke to a few of the brands that I work with and I am just, I could get emotional because essentially all the money being raised today is to go to extremely sick children. I cannot thank my brands enough. So I will be sharing the exact prizes. I will give you a sneak peek before anybody else sees it because Tivon Fine Jewelry, they just blow my mind in every single thing they do. Not only do they create, I mean, I've got the most stunning pair of earrings on today, but they have donated an extremely rare Tanzanite stone worth 20,000 pounds. I mean, just, remarkable absolutely remarkable so i'm really hoping that that is going to get people spending <laughs> anyway today is going to be fabulous and i just can't wait to share it with you so let's go and take a little look around just walking up to the pavilion and look at this classic jag how stunning is that one of my favorite colors oh, even the smell from here is sensational you know that amazing classic car smell it's almost like cognac and leather it's also sponsored today by bentley cars so we have a few very very cool bentleys bentley has actually recently come to high wickham one of their brand new showrooms mm, i like this one Got sort of like that dark army green and this is where the luncheon is being held today. So this is EJ Churchill's incredible event space. And we have a seated lunch for, I think the final numbers were 87. So fingers crossed, everybody is coming. Beautiful tables, the setup. We've obviously got the music team here. We've got the bar and let's go and have a little look at the tables. So we are just placing the final bits and pieces and lunch is going to begin in about an hour and a half to two hours. So this is the table setup. We've got some very delicate, dainty, pretty flowers. We don't want to go over the top. This is a charity event. And we've got the brochures here. So we have the Great Ormond Street Hospital Charity. It's the Gosh Clay Shoot today. EJ Churchill's Friday the 6th of October. And this is the brochure about all the different lots that we have. So as I was saying, Tivon Fine Jewelry has been so generous and has donated an extremely rare Tanzanite gem retailing at £20,000 so it's extremely generous of them. We have Deacon and Francis, we have Patrick Mavros, we've got incredible houses in Albany in the Bahamas, we've got McLaren days, different cooking, there is also a Braymont experience, Bentley have also sponsored the day, I mean look at those incredible supporters and sponsors. Honestly just can't thank the brands enough 
enough. Then we have our Tivon fine jewelry brochure. This is something I just think I will never quite get used to. So we have all of, about the brand and the legacy. My <laughs> face, all the beautiful different stones. This is actually one of my necklaces. This is the Morganite with the diamond. This is a beautiful photograph that we shot actually last Christmas. I'm so proud to say that Claudia actually shot this picture and we were shooting for Rolls Royce and of course Tivon. It's just an amazing, amazing brand and I just feel so lucky to be able to work with just such incredible brands through and through. So these are placed on the table for people to have a little bit of a perusal. And the ladies are just straightening up the knives and forks, popping down all of the brochures, all the different prizes. We've got the TV here just showcasing all of the guests, what there is to win. So we've got Deacon and Francis shotgun cufflinks. We've got a McKay Williamson art advisor and a 500 pound credit. We've got behind the scenes of Jaguar Land Rover, a luxury weekend away, a rugby package. Honestly, there is so much that is going to be auctioned today. And I I just I just pray that it goes the right way and then we have the tables with the prizes so we have lots in our silent auction today from tickets to Chelsea we've got his and her sport packages we've got the Lime Tree Hotel in Belgravia the whole works then we have a few prizes here now these are absolutely stunning these are the Deacon and Francis cufflinks very dear friend of mine Henry Deacon has been extremely generous by donating these we've got some children's toys PlayStation and then we continue down here and we've got some Google Pixel watches the Chromecast we've got Fitbits the headsets we have got an unforgettable experience at the Ritz in London so you've got an afternoon tea for two at the Ritz which if you haven't done that then that is definitely needs to be on your bucket list this is the Tanzanite rare gemstone but I am going to give you a sneak peek of the real thing in just a moment. This is really, really starting to come together. The jazz band has just started to play. They are warming up for the guests that will be arriving in about an hour. As you can hear, all the teams are already out shooting the clays. And today, as I said, it is a competition, so they will be winning a prize for those who have won the shooting competition. We are going to go and see the gents out there. My father is shooting both my brothers are shooting but first I'm going to be showing you a close-up of this breathtaking gemstone. So I've had the honour <laughs> of bringing this extremely rare tanzanite. I mean is that not the most beautiful stone you have ever seen and basically the whole experience is is that you get the Tivon fine jewelry experience that you can actually go to the workshop and you can have a design meeting with Ariel himself who designs all of the jewelry bespoke and you can create maybe a necklace a pendant a ring you could even buy a second tanzanite and have a pair of earrings but look at it it is just incredible look at the cut the color the depth it really is an absolute beauty. Anyway, before my hands shake <laughs> and I drop it, it is going to be popped back in its box and then on show. Okay, it's now time to move the goods. <laughs> oh gosh. Hands are literally shaking. And this is going to go directly in front there. It looks beautiful. I need to give the box a little bit of a polish. Isn't it look absolutely stunning? And here she is in all of her glory. This incredible stone, all set up, all the details down below. So it is a 7.45 AAAA vivid grade tanzanite rare gemstone. Oh. Okay, let's go and find my family team. Hopefully the boys are shooting well. Oh gosh, what an amazing day. I'm so pleased that the sun is shining. Paul is very kindly going to take me down to meet the boys. Thank you very much. Traveling in style with Paul on the golf cart. Going to find, find out where the boys are. 
It's lots of fun. Got my got my cap. Another speed bump. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Apparently they are down at the grouse. the grouse drive. Um, also want to add that obviously this is clay shooting, so obviously no animals are getting harmed in today, and it is raising money for an incredible charity, which I've told you so much about. Right, path is going on because we need to ensure that I don't get any of that clay in my eyes. Ah, oh, we are ready for action. <laughs> Just met up with the boys. Terrible timing. They've just finished. How are you doing? How did it go? Are you winning? I hate to say this, but we're in the mix. We're in the mix. We Good. So Hi, my dog. Are you enjoying life? How's she doing? She, oh, she loves it. Day out. She loves it. Well, although I uh, missed the shooting, at least I looked the part. <laughs> got, got the hat on. Oh God, what a the camouflage silly suit. Billy. A bit of camouflage. And I am fully dressed head to toe in Holland Cooper. I love it. Holland Cooper have been extremely generous. Did I tell you this? They have donated a weekend at their hotel, which is 131 in Cheltenham. Dinner at yep. a 500 pound gift voucher in Holland Cooper. Okay, I better bid for that. You should definitely bid for that. Yeah. You should take Adam. Yeah. Honestly, the most incredible weekend away. Just amazing. Just walking back up to the pavilion, oh, for a glass of champagne and lunch. Hopefully the boys are in for a medal. Very proud, very proud. Oh, I'm ready for a glass of champagne now. The ladies and gentlemen are just having the champagne reception. I've spotted Mummy and Mark. They have already arrived. We've got the full family in support today, both brothers, mother, father and husband. So you'll be seeing the family all back together again. Oh, let's go and have a gorgeous day and hopefully raise an obscene amount of money. Thank you so much. It looks delicious. Thank you. They look absolutely delicious. What do we have here? So we've got mini Yorkshire puddings with beef and we've got mini jacket potatoes with sour cream and chive. Delicious. And then we've got cucumber and salad. Thank you so much. Mummy has just arrived and Mark looking very, very dapper. Can I show you what Tivon has donated? So it's just over here. Here she is in all of her glory. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. It looks amazing. They are absolutely stunning. <gasps> Relax in a winter wonderland week in Hillsborough's Chalet for 12. Skiing trip? I'd love to see you skiing. I've never been with you skiing. Been with you skiing. No. Okay, ski trip, that. brother and sister style. This afternoon, we're not only here to have a wonderful lunch and enjoy some good company, but also to raise vital funds for Great Ormond Street Hospital Children's Charity and the new Children's Cancer Centre. I would like to kick things off by introducing Great Ormond Street Hospital and Clay Shoe Committee Chair, Sir Mike Rake, to share a few words with you all. But thank you, Victoria, and thank you all for coming.
look at this. Most expensive mistake on Noel Gallagher. You will see this very car. Gosh, but what a beautiful mistake it, it was. Look at this interior, the stunning wood, the steering wheel. Honestly, I do it all the time. Are you sure? Okay. Right, so get on here. Right, okay. Has it got keys in it? No. Can I start it? Please, can I start it? Where did you come today? I came second. Second. I'm very proud of you. you and what did you bid on today? I bid on the Hollander Cooper um, weekend away. That was amazing. I really regret. I really regret. I mean, that, that went well. Did you win it? No. 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 Um, so I've got some football tickets. You went Chelsea above Holland Cooper. Come on! Have I taught you anything? Have we taught him anything? I'm very disappointed, um, sister. Oh, hang on! But we are going skiing. We are going skiing. I'm feeling a bit. I'm a bit hot and sweaty about that. Actually, if you know. <laughs> A bit worried about we've how much we've just spent. Okay. We've got, a week, you know we've got an amazing chalet. <laughs> we have got an amazing for 12 chalet. 12 people for an entire week. And in whenever Austria, we want to go, um, to go skiing. Do you know what? My horses are in Salzburg. So we can actually go and see the horses. We can go skiing. And do you know what? It's all for the most incredible cause. Hello, my angels. Happy Sunday. I hope you're all really, really well. It is about. 30, 11 a.m. I had a bit of a lion. Well, I say a lion. I <laughs> take the dogs out very early, very bright eyed and extremely bushy tailed. <laughs> I was so tired this morning. So I took the dogs out like always sort of 7, 7.30 and then I feed them their breakfast and then I actually just leave the door open downstairs and they can make their way upstairs and get into bed with us which is so naughty but it's a little bit of a Sunday tradition and in all honesty I think I I just needed a bit of a slow morning I'm I'm sort of really tired at the moment in all honesty just so much going on my brain feels like it's here there and everywhere and I do have solutions to that I just make sure that my schedule is ultra organized sometimes I buffer in a little bit of space where maybe I need to take some time out and have some self-care um, and yeah I did that this morning which is so gorgeous so I got up as I said feeling a little bit sluggish really tired and on days like that I try to make an effort. So I hope you'll agree with me. I had a shower, I washed and blow dried my hair, I popped a little bit of makeup on, I tried to cover up these very puffy and tired looking eyes. I think with a combination of an enormous workload, really busy, late nights, early starts, um, I was drinking on Friday so that doesn't help. And yeah, so uh, tired face, popped a little bit of makeup on, put on my very cozy snugglies. This is one of my um, NPL cashmere dresses. And I've got my floofy <laughs> slippers on. And I feel like I'm ready to tackle the day. We've actually got a really, really chilled Sunday, which is so lovely. I actually yesterday had a Holland Cooper delivery. So I thought, what better time? Come on, speak to you guys. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling it is their brand new dress collection. Now, if you have been a viewer of my YouTube channel for a while, you'll know that I live in my Holland Cooper sweater dresses. I wear them every day for working from home. They're sort of super smart, they're cozy, they're warm. They are so flattering, but I also style them up to go on date nights. Like my scooped neck with the low back with the incredible gold hardware chain is so elevated 
weird and stunning. It's probably my most worn sweater dress. So when I saw that they have their new dresses come out, I was like, oh, I need these. So I just wanted to share them with you. I get so many questions about what do I wear on an everyday basis? You see me dressed to the absolute nines, but I suppose you don't really get to see me in my sort of everyday mufti working from home attire. I think I am actually going to do a whole nother vlog on that because I've got so many different brands um, that are almost like my school uniform as such, but I think I'm going to be living in these Holland Cooper dresses and uh, Trust me when I say, I think you all know that I'm absolutely obsessed with the colour chocolate. And they have a chocolate sweater dress. <laughs> so, <laughs> calm down, Leonora. We are going to unbox it together. I don't know whether we should just unbox it here. I've got the mirror behind me, so I'm actually sat chatting to you on my windowsill and I've got this gorgeous little floofy chair here and it's always sort of such a lovely place to sit and actually look over our fields and most of the time see the sausages going utterly nuts on the lawn. Um, but I don't know whether it's going to be distracting having the mirror in the background, but I suppose actually um, you'll be able to see the back of the dress. So do you know what? Let's just stay here makes it a lot easier and it's really nice just to have some time with you guys and without having a mental schedule and time slots and uh, I'm also, which I'm really excited, we have some pumpkins downstairs and I'm really mindful that this time of year everybody is so obsessed with Halloween and trust me I am obsessed with Halloween and that is coming on a whole another vlog but what do people do when they have finished with their pumpkins? They've been so busy carving pumpkins and painting pumpkins and doing all this stuff with pumpkins, but do you know what pumpkins are? You're meant to eat pumpkins. So I'm actually going to do a little bit, a super quick cook along. I really want to make a sort of a cream of pumpkin soup with a hint of white truffle and sage. It's super quick and it is so delicious. It's warm, it's hearty, it's autumnal, and it is absolutely scrumptious. So let's do a very quick Holland Cooper unboxing and then we're gonna go make a pumpkin soup. Mm, yum! So let me just grab this box and let's unbox it together. I think you all know that I get so excited when I have a Holland Cooper delivery. There is nothing quite like that green and gold box. And I know that I work with the brand, but I hope you guys know by now that I don't work with any brands unless I truly worship them inside and out. Look at this box. It is so luxurious, it is so timeless, and it really gets my heart ticking. So let's unbox this. As always, so beautifully gift wrapped. If ever you are thinking to potentially gift a Holland Cooper item, I would 100% 100% tell you that you should because when you unbox a package like this it is so special they have gone to such great efforts to package it so beautifully with their stunning Holland Cooper tissue paper you get your return slips um, in a gorgeous little envelope like so and then they are always packaged to perfection with their gorgeous little Holland Cooper stickers <sighs> the colors Honestly, I think the collection just gets better and better every single season. From the colours to the design to just even the small, tiny little elements that they change. Just maybe accentuate the female body that little bit more or better in some ways. <gasps> They've even packaged them in the perfect order. I think I'm even gonna have to put these on because you need to see how stunning they truly are. So first up, oh my goodness, the color. The color that is perfect for every single season is cream. I think you'll agree with me. We're going into autumn winter. So I'm thinking I would style this with like chocolate boots, winter whites, 
is a vibe. I love a tonal look and winter whites, even possibly with like a red lip, something really strong, is iconic. You've got spring summer on those really chilly days because we live in the UK. <laughs> you could wear this. Honestly, it is perfect for every single season. Oh my goodness. Jade, what are you doing to me? These dresses are stunning. I, oh, I've lost a slipper. Oh, they match my slippers. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. You've got the balloon sleeves. You've got the tiny little Holland Cooper buttons. Really understated, but it just elevates the whole look. Now, I'm really intrigued to see how the polar neck sits. And I love the length. It comes, as you can see, I would say like the skinniest part of your ankle, just before your calf starts to go sort of slightly bigger into your calf muscle. So it's such a flattering cut. And then you've got the little side slits. So if you wanted to wear a pair of heels, it would sort of like kick really beautifully. And again, with boots. Okay. I am going to scooch over there because you do not want to see me get changed. <laughs> and I'm gonna pop it on and show you what it looks like. Oh my giddy aunt, I am in love. <gasps> Look at this. So this is a Holland Cooper's Barclay roll neck dress in this stunning sort of I would say cream I need to double check what they call it on the website now I have this in a medium because I wanted it just slightly oversized but still able to put a belt on I love how they've done this roll neck it is so good so it's slightly loose and it comes slightly lower down which actually i think is really really flattering it shows sort of the slimness of your neck yet you still get that gorgeous elevated roll neck wintry cozy feeling the balloon sleeves quite honestly make it i love the length i mean talk about the coziest outfit of all time but I, looking in the mirror so you guys can see the back, I would wear this with a pair of heels. I'm gonna wear my like knee length chocolate Jimmy Choo boots with this. I love how they've got the slight hints of gold. I'm just looking at these buttons. They are so beautiful. I actually think these are new buttons for Holland Cooper. Look at that. It's almost like my Cartier watch. You've got the three rows and then you've got that little dainty HC in the middle. So you've got the accents of gold on the wrist. They go into this beautiful oversized balloon sleeve. And then you've also got the gold buttons on the shoulder. Oh, I'm, a I'm actually blown away with the design details of this. It is also so soft to touch it's got wool it's got a slight hint of alpaca in here and then you've also got a touch of the elastine just to ensure that it fits beautifully but i hope you'll agree with me i'm i'm in love with this so they've also sent it in a gorgeous camel color which in all honesty i think at this time of year you've got sort of october november time camel is a vibe and i've also got my holland cooper biscuit trench coat i literally look at it every single day and i'm like it is stunning and i think just draped over the shoulders even over this would look amazing but on the camel it's going to be a vibe. I'm thinking fully tonal outfit. I'm thinking my Paris, Texas camel pointed suede boots, the camel Barkley dress, and then the biscuit trench over the top. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's going to be amazing. I just need somewhere to wear it. Marcus, can we um, make a plan for today because I've got a really great outfit? And there's me wanting a quiet Sunday. And just because I have an epic outfit to wear, we're going out. <laughs> I am joking, but I think it's going to be beautiful. So let's pop it on. And look at these buttons. I literally feel like I'm wearing an antique vintage Chanel piece on my wrists. They are so beautiful. 
and they're not too much, which I love. Just those sort of small hints of gold. It brings in my signet ring, my wedding rings, my jewelry, and I am definitely one that believes that you can wear both silver or white gold or yellow gold together. And just with the buttons on the shoulders and the wrists, it sort of just ties everything together. Let's take a little look at it full length. Oh, almost fell off the chair. <laughs> that would have been fun. I am absolutely in love. I can't, I, th I feel like I need like two of each, just so that I can have one that I can sort of be at home, relax with the dogs and just look the bomb. And then a dress that I can sort of like really dress up and down. Boots, stilettos. Think that trench coat draped over my shoulders. <gasps> What is she doing up there? I love this so much. I love actually how the neck is not sort of too constricting. You know when you've got a polar neck on and um, sometimes you want people to know that you've actually got like a neck and a chin and you've got a bit of height there. I love how it's sort of like scooped down slightly so that you can actually see your neck. I think it's super flattering for a lady and I love how they have designed this. I don't want to take it off. I don't want to take it off. But the last sweater dress is just so insane. When I saw it on the website, I was literally like, that is my dream dress. I want something that's a little bit smarter, possibly something that I could wear into London. I still want to be cozy and have that sort of quite sexy look of a sweater dress, yet something that I can wear in a boardroom. So when I saw this, I was like, they have nailed it. They've literally nailed it. And I truly believe that's because Jade, there are so many different elements to her life. She's a mum, she's an entrepreneurial boss woman. She is quite possibly one of the most beautiful women I have ever met in my entire life. And she prides herself on designing pieces that fit women and women of all shapes and sizes. So fingers crossed this dress is as epic as I think it's going to be. So I'm gonna quickly pop it on and we're all going to probably be, hopefully be, astounded together. Ladies and gentlemen, I need a drum roll. <laughs> Not only is it my favorite color of the entire season, just, just wait. Look at this masterpiece. The sculpt of this stunning knitted dress is everything. With me being slightly more curvy, I always love to accentuate sort of the smallest parts of my body, which is most certainly my waist. As I always say, I've got a rather large bottom and thighs, but I'm a woman, I have curves, I have ribs, I have a bottom, and I think it's important to show it off in sort of a ladylike way. And look at this sweater dress. So it's this gorgeous like ribbed detailing. You've got the gold buttons on the wrist. Those incredible vintage looking gold buttons. They have added shoulder pads, which creates this sort of rather smart, oversized, slightly boxy shoulder look. They've also popped on a collar into a V. And now the V is placed so perfectly for every single occasion. Now I'm thinking I would pop a blazer on, I'd wear a pair of chocolate tights, and then wear, actually I've got them, I think they're downstairs, I've got this incredible pair of vintage, they were my mother's, ostrich leather chocolate Gucci court heels. Oh, now that is an outfit. But also, I mean, I could literally pop on my fluffy slippers. I feel like it'd be a waste. This dress is so iconic and epic but I could also wear this walking around the house. The color is everything. They have been so smart with their colors this season. And also, it's worth mentioning the price point. Now, I have been on the hunt for a smart, with a collar, sweater dress for months. And I look at sort of the Selfridges and the Harrods website, and they are all absolutely beautiful, and I'm sure the quality is incredible. But you're looking at like five or six hundred pounds for a sweater dress. This is 
£159. It's something that will last in my wardrobe for years and it's something that I'm going to wear time and time and time again. I just have to think back to my black scoop neck, low back sweater dress. I've probably worn it. I've probably worn it about 50 times. I know that sounds crazy, but that's Holland Cooper. You aren't scrimping on quality. You aren't scrimping on design. You're getting everything, but just such for a competitive price. And can you believe this dress? Like, I would think you could walk into, you could literally walk into Gucci ready to wear and you wouldn't find a sweater dress that looked like this on you. Everything, the length, these buttons, I don't think I'm getting over these buttons. It's also quite difficult to find a ribbed dress that doesn't like pull. You know when the ribs go down and you can sort of see when they're getting slightly stretched? This material is so smart because it's holding me in where I need to be held in. Possibly just over here, which is my, we all have our areas. And mine is most certainly sort of my thighs. I love my bottom because my bottom is my bottom. I inherited my bottom from my mother and my grandmother. And that's just life. <laughs> I just need to get more steps in during the day. Potentially go to the gym and make it slightly more perky. But anyway, that is not the point I'm trying to make. Um, it just holds everything in. It shows off my small waist. It holds my sort of chest area beautifully. I love... I love, love, I'm going to say it one more time, love the shoulder pads. It just elevates it and makes it that little bit more, I don't know, it just adds that little touch that other people haven't thought of and makes you different. And I love it. Also the collar. I feel like because where I'm sat, you can't quite see the collar, but it's this beautiful pointed collar and it's brought down into a V that sort of you get that tiny, if you want to, you could have like a tiny bit of cleavage showing, but again, it's extremely ladylike. You can be so demure. <sighs> I'm obsessed. Honestly, I woke up this morning feeling a little bit down and tired just by opening my Holland Cooper box. It's just the tonic that I needed. I am obsessed. Gosh, I feel like I want to wear this to make pumpkin soup, but I feel like it's a bit of a waste. Maybe I'll pop on my, maybe I'll pop on my camel. The natural would be a little bit risky considering we're making essentially an orange colored soup. Maybe I'll pop on the camel dress and we're gonna go downstairs and make the most scrumptious wholesome, hearty, pumpkin, white truffle and sage soup. So let's go. Downstairs and in the kitchen, I've actually just propped you up on the most hilarious thing. I needed the camera to be sort of like slightly tilted. So I have actually, in fact, put a garlic clove slightly underneath the camera and it has done the trick. So as I said, we are going to make pumpkin soup. Now, I sort of kind of have a little bit of a thing when it comes to carving pumpkins. Essentially, pumpkins are grown to eat and there's so much around Halloween and carving pumpkins and painting pumpkins and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. But there's something that we can do with the carvings and there's something we can do with the pumpkins after we, oh, there's a big wasp. Oh, okay, he's gone the other way. Thank goodness for that. And there's something that we can do after uh, we have carved our pumpkins because it breaks my heart that so many just rot and get thrown away. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. So it's kind of a little bit of a sustainable dual purpose for a pumpkin. So first things first, let's just have a little chat through the ingredients. It's super simple and to be honest with you, the time is really in the baking of the pumpkin. So we need a large pumpkin. We need salt, cracked pepper, olive oil, and again, a little bit of a spoily thing, but something that we absolutely love in our household is white truffle oil. Now our local farm shop sells the truffle hunter white truffle oil and it is 
so scrumptious but actually truffles are in fact a little bit like marmite some of you love them some of you hate them so the white truffle oil is really optional um, but we absolutely love it you then need chicken stock now sometimes I would make that from scratch depending upon whether we'd had a roast chicken during the week um, but you need about Depends upon how much pumpkin we're gonna use, but I think we're gonna use about a liter of chicken stock. It just adds real flavor. But again, if you want this to be a vegetarian soup, then by all means use uh, vegetable stock. We're gonna need some naughty double cream, but trust me, it adds to the flavor and it makes it slightly more thick, creamy, and just unctuous. We need some butter. And then what I like to add is one white onion and a few shallots. It really, really adds to that delicious taste. And then we're going to finish it off with some fried sage. And trust me, this is the star of the show. So those are the ingredients. It's super basic. So let's get straight into the recipe. So here we have our Oh, that wasp is back. Our enormous pumpkin. And what I'm going to do, I'm probably gonna pop this on a time lapse because you'll see me wrestling with this big bad boy. I'm going to carve it up with a much bigger knife than that. And I'm going to chop it up into cubes. I'm gonna roast it in the oven. I'm also going to save the pumpkin seeds because we're going to sprinkle them on the top of our soup. So, let's do this. <laughs> Now please be careful when you are cutting up your pumpkin because it can be slightly tricky. The knife can slip and you know we don't want any uh, fingernails or fingers in our pumpkin soup. So I am going to, I'm actually using a carving knife which is probably not the best knife for this but at least it is sharp. See look at that. Straight down. Marcus is out there on the blower. I mean who blows leaves on a Sunday. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Anyway, he's out there happy as Larry. He loves jobs like that. He loves washing his car as well, which, um, you know, I think it's rather therapeutic for him. But if that blowing machine is bothering you, trust me, that makes two of us. <laughs> oh, she said she was gonna put it on a time lapse, but eh, come on, you know, you wanna go through there. It's probably scaring all of you, it's scaring me actually. Let's turn this around. And then we're going to cut down this side, get through the middle. Oh, look at that beautiful color and all of those gorgeous pumpkin seeds. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to scoop out the middle. I'm going to wash off the seeds and I'm actually just gonna pop them on a tray with a touch of olive oil and I'm going to season them. And then I'm gonna roast those. I'm then going to cut this up and pop that in the oven too. So my oven is currently preheating. We need it at 170 degrees and the pumpkin is going to cook, as I said, for about 50 to 60 minutes. Got myself a bowl and a spoon to scoop. But before I get myself all messy, almost forgot, I need to put my penny on because I've got a beautiful Holland Cooper dress on and I am not getting pumpkin on it. What do we think? Do we think I can pull this little, this little roll neck through? Oh, love it. There we go. I am ready to cook. I absolutely love this penny. I've showed it to you quite a few times now, but it's my Mrs. Alice one with my name on it. So if any of you forget who I am, um, <laughs> my name is here. Right, let's start getting out these seeds. And it really is just so simple. Now the big carving pumpkins are super easy to scoop out the middle. Do you know what, if I am going to be making pumpkin soup, then I would normally go with the smaller pumpkins because the taste is a lot more intense. However, I just wanted to be able to show you that there are so many things that you can do with carving pumpkins and um, they don't need to go in the bin, they don't need to rot. You can make delicious things out of them as well as carving them for Halloween. Right, that is all done and I'm going to just literally pop that mixture Ooh, our oven is ready in there I think it's almost time to turn the agar on it has been so mild and next week is actually forecast to be really rather muggy so I think I might leave it a little bit longer but I'd say in about a week or two that agar is going to be 
fired up. Right, that is one section done. Let's get the next section done and I will come back and show you how I cut it up. There we go, sorted all those seeds out. And I'm now just beginning to cut up my pumpkin. Oh my goodness. Make sure I don't knock anything over. It literally doesn't have to be pretty. It's just so you get into a position where you can actually start to take out those chunks. And I think because this pumpkin is actually rather quite soft, I can take it away from the skin now. With those smaller pumpkins, they can be quite tough. So really quite difficult to get away from the pulp. So I would sometimes roast them and then they literally just fall away from their skin. But this is almost like when you um, cut up a mango. Once you cut it in half and get it to a position where it's not going to sort of roll around or be all slippery, you can literally just cut it away from its skin. So I'm literally just chopping this into chunks. Let me show you the size. Into this sort of chunk size popping them straight onto a baking tray. And then I'm going to just keep doing that until I've got through all my pumpkin. And then I will come back and show you how I season them and pop them in the oven. Now that is our pumpkin, all cut up into sort of large cubes, I would say. This is actually half the pumpkin, just because I want to save the other half for something else, which will be coming on a whole nother vlog. So I will actually leave all of the quantities, the mills, the grams, everything specifically in the description box down below, just so that you can follow along exactly with this recipe. Now, once you've got your pumpkins all cut up into large chunky cubes, take your olive oil, be rather generous, and we're just going to drizzle the olive oil over the top of those pumpkins, and that is going to ensure that they bake beautifully we want, we want them to be golden brown get that gorgeous golden color we're then going to take some flaked sea salt and just sprinkle that over the top again please be generous with your seasoning because that is really what adds to the flavor we're going to take some pepper and she is then ready the oven mm -hmm. you're a touch on the wonk but I wanted to be able to show you the oven so they're all ready to rock and roll and they are going in and they are going to go in for about 40 to 50 minutes I think just because the pumpkin was really gorgeously ripe in the middle now we are going to prepare our onions our onions <laughs> onions and shallots and we are going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil in a pan on the hob and we are going to sweat these down until they are translucent now it's super important that you don't burn your onions um, because otherwise they'll add sort of like a really awful bitter taste and that is not the vibe that we are going for today so I'm just going to quickly prepare the shallots and the onion and I will meet you guys over at the hob now over at the hob, I'm just going to pop a touch of olive oil into a non-stick frying pan, like so. I'm gonna pop it on a sort of low to medium heat. Add our onions, straight in, get myself a wooden spoon, and just let those sweat down until they are sort of clear to translucent and I'm just going to constantly just toss them around the frying pan just to make sure that that olive oil is, coats all of those gorgeous onions and shallots and then we are going to prepare the pumpkin seeds together I'm going to pop them in the oven and they're just going to add that slight little bit of crunch to the soup and it's really nice to be able to use all of the parts of the pumpkin to make something delicious. Um, so yeah, 
I will see you guys in a little bit once these cooked. Prepping my pumpkin seeds. I've just tried to pull away any of that sort of like stringiness in between uh, the pumpkin seeds. So try and get rid of as much as that as you possibly can. Obviously you can't get rid of all of it. So this is kind of what it should look like. So I've just spread out my pumpkin seeds on my baking tray. I am now going to take a little bit of salt and I'm going to season a little bit of cracked pepper. Again, things like this, it's all about the seasoning. And then I'm gonna pop you on top of the, uh, the double cream for a moment so that you can see what I'm doing. Touch of black pepper. And then the piece de la resistance is the tiniest little drizzle of the truffle oil. And it makes such a difference. So I'm just making sure that that truffle oil and all that salt and pepper is fully coating all of those seeds. And I'm now just going to pop it alongside our gorgeous cubes of pumpkin to roast. Yum, a double scrum. Our pumpkin seeds are out and look at how delicious and golden they look. Our pumpkin is golden and cooked to perfection. So let's just take this out of the oven. Those gorgeous crispy edges. Oh, absolutely divine. I've just popped my pumpkin, popped my pumpkin <laughs> on the side just to cool slightly whilst I add our butter into our onion mixture. Now I've popped it into a little bit of a bigger pot just so that when we add the pumpkin and the vegetable stock uh, and we blend, it doesn't go absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to pop that on a low heat bear with me just a moment there we go so i've just popped that on a low heat we're going to let that butter melt into those onions and then it will be ready for our pumpkins gosh it's going to be absolutely delicious and trust me once those pumpkins have cooked it's relatively easy and very very simple there's not that many ingredients and the time is really in um, baking that pumpkin so that is just melting beautifully into those onions and this just makes it slightly more creamy and having a slight sweet taste to those onions and shallots right i'm going to head over there i'm going to collect our pumpkins and we're going to pop them in together right it is time to just place the pumpkin in oh wow they smell so good you could even just have this with a little bit of sour cream or tzatziki. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a mix. Coat all of that delicious pumpkin with that gorgeous butter. And then we are going to add the chicken stock. Waitrose actually do these fantastic little flavoursome chicken stock. They're like fresh chicken stock. And you can pop this into like gravy, sauces, soups all of that jazz i can see this going absolutely everywhere there we go i'm just going to pour this in like so and really you need to eyeball it it depends upon how thick you want your soup to be so i'm going to pop that on a medium low to medium temperature on the hob <laughs> there we go and I'm going to let it sizzle away. And once it is all come together, we're going to add a dollop of double cream and then we're gonna blitz it. <laughs> Yum! That is bubbling away beautifully. Now I'm going to do one of the last few little things, which is frying the sage. So a touch of olive oil into a non-stick frying pan. Make sure you've got some kitchen roll next to you, just so that you can take them out and pop them onto the kitchen roll, which will absorb the oil. My lovely pumpkins are just, oh, mm, the smell is just divine. So I'm gonna heat that up, place my sage leaves. So they should look like this. And I've got about six or seven, maybe eight or nine. <laughs> And I'm gonna just pop that into that oil when it has um, heated up. Now I'm gonna turn off my beautiful pumpkin soup. And the last little thing we're going to do, mm, this is going to make it, is just pour a touch, mm, I would say about 200 mils of double cream. 
and we're going to give that a good old stir. You don't need to actually have any heat on at this point. I'm just going to stir that double cream in. We're going to let that rest for just a moment and we're going to add in our sage leaves. And you can literally just pop them in here for about a minute to each side so it doesn't take long but I trust me the flavor will be incredible this is really what is going to get your taste buds dancing in your mouths so that is plenty that is just sizzling away and then we're going to take our enormous pot of pumpkin soup over to my blender and I'm going to use a, I don't know what you call it, a zhuzha, like mm, and that's why I've got the big pot. <laughs> so I'm going to take it over back to my workstation and we're going to mix it and blend it and mm, it all together. <laughs> we are back and she has her this one is from Russell Hobbs and literally it is as easy as popping this into the mixture and just blending it all together and I'm going to spend a little bit of time combining this you could even put this into a Thermomix you could pop it into like the smoothie blenders I just find this is the easiest way and to be honest with you the least amount of water so I'm going to spend a little bit of time blending this all together. I <laughs> think you probably can't hear me whilst doing that. Mm. Our pumpkin soup is blended to perfection. I love a smooth, thick, wholesome soup and this is just that. So I've got myself a little soup bowl a ladle and I am going to pop it into the bowl and we are going to put it all together just so that you can see the final product looks and smells incredible. I am then going to pop a touch of sea salt over the top. I'm then going to sprinkle it with our, look at this, our gorgeous pumpkin seeds. I feel like you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take away that garlic clove, and here we go. Now you can see the soup. We're gonna place a few of these over the top, just that that adds that slight little crunch, and you have all the elements of the pumpkin. Mmm, delish. We're going to place the little sage leaf in the middle. A touch, and I mean a very, very touch, of black crushed pepper and then the piece de la resistance which is the white truffle oil now you can be really 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 gentle light-handed and that is our truffle sage and cream pumpkin soup and i don't know about you but i think that that looks absolutely delicious but we don't know yet I haven't actually done a taste test so bear with me a hot sir found myself a spoon let's give this a little taste test oh my goodness wow mmm wow oh mmm that is so good. Actually, in fact, I'm a bit naughty. I like a little bit more salt, but that is something else. And trust me, the sage leaf lets off the most incredible essence. You've got those gorgeous pumpkin seeds in there. Mm. They give it a slight crunch and the flavor. Mm. I truly believe the white truffle oil makes it. Anyway, I am going to finish off my pumpkin soup in peace. I promise I won't bore you to death whilst I'm eating my pumpkin soup. And actually, I'm going to bring this vlog to an end. I truly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this one. I always say I pride myself on showing you everything and I feel like it's such an important part of what I do and what my family do um, in terms of uh, charity events that, you know what, I thought it's part of me and a part of who I am, so why would I not share it with you? So it was so 
it was just so lovely to be able to bring you along with me and I really really hope that you guys enjoy that aspect of my life and enjoyed coming along. Anyway, you guys saw the most sensational Holland Cooper dresses. I would jump on that. If you love the dresses as much as I do, then I would buy them very quickly because I have a feeling they are going to sell out. So I will leave all the details in that description box down below, as well as sharing my favorite pumpkin soup recipe. Oh, mm. Mm. excuse me. Mm. If I must say so myself, absolutely delicious. <laughs> as always, sending you so much love.